What is up everyone? This is Pyotr and welcome to my Hearts of Iron noob tutorial. So this is going to assume that you're pretty new to the game or maybe you've had it for a while and just don't know how it works. And also no DLC. So we're going to play with no DLC on. That's um, yeah, so this is very noobish. And yeah, the point of the tutorial, I'm going to try to go through pretty quickly and just kind of explain things as I go along. So yeah, to start, if you want a tutorial that's like going over everything super in depth, this is not for you. But I'm going to tell you what you need to know to get started. So the idea is that, you know, at any point you can just walk away from the tutorial and try things on your own. And if it works awesome, if it doesn't, come back and Pyotr will, will show you the way. So yeah, to start, we're going to play as America because that's, a, I'd say Germany or America are the best countries for beginners. America, you're kind of undisturbed. If it's just chill. You want to you wanna hoi and chill and just build up an empire, sit back. That's play as America. Play as Germany if you want to like be forced to learn the mechanics very quickly, forced to invade things, uh, like to replicate the historical stuff. So we'll play as America. And yeah, also you got a choice. We'll play with Iron Man mode on, and we'll keep historical AI focuses on. And that's um, basically we're gonna simulate World War II. That's that's the point. So in Iron Man mode, yeah, I'll, I'll keep that on. Sure. For the difficulty, I'll keep it on regular. I'd really recommend that. Like if you're a new player and you choose civilian. It's going to give you all these neat little bonuses, but it's going to make it, like, it's tough to tell if you're doing well or bad, or if it's just the bonuses kind of fudge everything up. So we'll just stay on regular. And that's good enough for now. And make our file here. So when the game opens up, you will just see it's just a map. It's like, it's like looking at Google Earth. It's like, what exactly, what do I do? So you had to start, like, Hearts of Iron, allegedly it's a game, but I'd call it more of a program. Like it's a program that tries to simulate World War II. And if you press play, it's just gonna it's gonna show like what happened in the world from 1936 onward. So we can see here, like at the beginning, this is we should see some stuff break out here. Like um yeah, so we see here there's some conflict. This is simulating the war in um, between Ethiopia and Italy. So we could just let play, press play, let this continue and like things will happen in the world. But uh, we wanna focus on America, so we'll come back here. Right now, you can see I press play and nothing bad happened. So you could you could have this on play. You could have time progressing for like years and years, and it would give no indication that you won or not. Like when um, there's a high score screen, I think in like 1950, but you can just dismiss like the high score screen doesn't really tell you anything, so you can just dismiss it. But so yeah, you have no indication if you're winning or losing. What do you do exactly? Like what do you press on? There's tons of buttons. Like I have no idea what to do. You see stuff here. Like do I move them around? I don't know. So. Pyotr will show you. Pyotr will tell you what to do. So for this tutorial, we're going to start with the alerts. Like, of, of all the things to click on first, the alerts, that's a good one to start with. So we'll just start on the left and work our way right. So the first one here, and also I'll, I'll pause the game while I explain this. Like, we could, um, we could have it playing, but I'll just get some stuff done first. So the first one here, it says research slot available. So let me click on this. You have four research slots available. Is that important? Should I care? Uh, this is very important. Like, you always want to be researching things. So we have four here. Let's click on one of them. We see all these items. Uh, by the end of the game, like, you want to get all of these items researched. But there's a lot to do. So if you're not sure what's important, what you should start with, I will tell you. So the first thing, uh, unless you're in the middle of a war, like, 99% of the time, you want to start with um, electrical engineering. That's really good. It get the reason for that, this gives you additional research speed. So all the things we're researching, we can do it 3% quicker. Right now it's plus 10%. That's due to um, just because of America in the background. So this will add 3 to that. And then as we work our way down, this is plus 4, plus 5, plus 8. And that just keeps stacking and stacking. So we want to get started with that ASAP. Uh, of the other ones, that's, I'll give you a hint. Like all of these, we see support equipment, armor. Like these are all war, war related. And we're America, you know, we're not going to be, we know, like, we're playing historical, so we're not going to be at war until something, we we might be at war in 1941, Japan might do something, so we have a while to prepare. We've got five years. So we're going to start with, we're going to click on the industry tab, and this is kind of like the home front, the economic stuff. So we want to take care of this before we go to war, so while we're in war, we can focus on, like, researching the things that helps us win it. So we'll start with basic machine tools. You don't even need to know what it is. Just know it's, it's going to help your economy at home. So we'll do it. And what else here? We'll also do better construction so we can build things quicker. That one's kind of easier to understand. And this is synthetic refineries. That sounds kind of complicated. So uh, I see some aircraft here. Might as well. We could get started with one, even though it's... Uh, yeah, let's start with... Uh, let's start with Navy. So let's do... I'll research this. Uh, this is another destroyer here. 
and we're not it doesn't help us immediately but it's going to be good to have so i can just research this in the background i could choose artillery i could choose we see we're really out of date here but i'll just start with the boat why not and so we notice there was that little symbol there it's gone now so previously it said research something but now the alerts we have everything here so we're done that's good we just need to let these fill up so 88 days 134 all that neat next one here says free civilian factories so what what's a civilian factory like a civilian factory is what you use to uh the main thing is to build other items so we can see here um like do i want to build a road do i want to build a dock all this to build that i need civilian factories um and in this case there's free so we have some available and they're not being used so let's do that uh of the of all the things to build i think a good idea for most games is to build more civilian factories especially if you're not starting in a war because that's just it's going to build up your in your like the economy at home so when you're in the middle of a war you can focus on building more military items and for the point of the game uh like the home front like all the home economy stuff it's really only like the whole point of the game is war it's so like the civilian factories we're building like it doesn't really the civilian goods don't really matter you know your people's happiness doesn't really matter there's stability there's war support but like for the purpose of the game the civilian factories they're only like they're to be used for military purposes basically so don't worry about uh keeping your people happy or anything so we're just going to build a bunch where to build them first uh build them in the states that are a bit darker because that means their infrastructure level is better uh if you don't do that like if you build it in montana instead of somewhere where it's uh, the infrastructure is higher like ohio it'll take slightly longer to build but that's the only bad thing that'll happen so it won't it's not a big deal you can put them anywhere and it'll still build but if you were to pick somewhere first uh pick a darker shade of the area so now we see here i just clicked on a bunch of random states here like let's click on all of them sure looks nice if i fill that up so now what, what i just did i'm building a civilian factory in every single state in the order that i clicked on them so that's a lot this is going to take a while but this is a good investment like this will help us when we're at war so i can see a ton here right now we've got 29 in total so we can build two at the same time you can only um the maximum factories you can put on one building is 15 no matter what it is so where's uh when this one gets constructed this is gonna go we'll have two on 15 then it'll just keep going and going because then we can build three things four and then it'll just keep filling up so that's awesome and now we see our, our alerts are getting a bit uh those are dwindling down so now the next one here says free military factories uh military so yeah there's two types of factories we have where is this uh civilian and military like yeah those are factories also dockyards i guess they're called dockyards not factories but they they produce things just like the other factories let's see we'll click on the military factory here right now it says um we have 10 in total and five of them are assigned so we see one two three four and five this is the fifth one here carrier fighter so this is these are the military items with the military factories like you're building your guns all the things that we saw in the research tab like the tanks and guns and all of that like right now we just have these little world war one tanks where's oh oh that, that looks pretty neat yeah what's the problem with that yeah i think you can get better you need the dlc to get the different like 3d tanks but oh well okay so where was it yeah so five on ten assigned this is that's not great i know when we're at war we'll want like hundreds of these but we have a long time to prepare so what to do first um i see we have a we have a lot of shortages here like we're short twenty thousand guns we're short 700 support equipment so i don't really i don't need to know all the details i know like guns are very very important for war so let's put uh put a lot on that and maybe now we only have two more to build so let's do these trains we can also add new items so trains are important that'll be um yeah it helps keep us applied of the new white yeah so to add a new item we could build some air stuff uh we could build these world war one tanks or we could build these i think i'm gonna add i added the trains because i know that's important i'll add the trucks because that'll help with bringing out supplies as well as you know like in war there's just you're gonna need a lot of trucks so we'll get that out there too and now now they're all assigned so we can't um like we can try to add another one here so let's say i want some anti-air but we'll see it's a it's like a shadow of a factory it's not fully filled out so i know anti-air will be good eventually i'll put it um in where you drag it depends on like how important you think the item is so if i put it at the very top anti-air will be prioritized over everything else but i think um i know guns are more important than anti-air like guns are probably the most important everyone needs a gun this isn't stalingrad um i think artillery is more important than anti-air 
even trucks. So yeah, I'm going to lower it. I'll have the anti-air below the trucks because it's good to have but not super important. And then once we get a factory, that'll fill in. If I want to, if I want it to fill in right now, I can see I have five on guns. I'll lower that to four, and now now we're making everything, so we're good there. So we can exit out of that. And we see the next one here says free dockyards. So yeah, these the alerts they're kind of dwindling down. Free dockyards. That's very similar to the military factory. Instead of producing items like your that your troops on the ground will use, it's producing item like it's producing um like everything in the sea. So all the ships. So you can actually, you can move the ships around and stuff. What we're going to build here, we're going to build convoys because that's very, very important for war. So I'll put, I'll put two of them on convoys here. We'll put this on the bottom. And now convoys will just kind of accumulate in the background so we can see we have 431 now. Uh, if we have like a thousand during the war, that's probably good If we, because they'll be sunk. So if we keep it around a thousand, you know, we can do naval invasion. So we'll let that build up in the background. And we still have, so we can see here, yeah, America is a very powerful navy. So we'll have a lot to build here. I can see we're building all these destroyers here. Uh, let me add, let's just add one to these. So I could do, I could do a ton on these, but we'll just add one. So I'll add one to all of them. And I can see like the same as before, this is a shadow of a dock. It's not an actual one, but as these get built, those, uh, those will fill in. So we'll be good there. And now that's good. So we've, now that's another one down here. This one says missing equipment production. So what does that mean? Uh, so the missing equipment production means you have uh, you have things in the field that need equipment, like they need equipment for them to be at full strength, like their authorized equipment, but they don't have it, like we're not making it. Um, so yeah, things things that our army needs are not being produced, so that sounds bad, but if we want to find out more, we can look at this. So in this case, it's saying our army needs fighters, we need tactical bombers, close air support. Um, our aircraft carriers need close air support, naval bombers, so there's a lot that we need here. Uh, however, this is, I can see this is all like Air Force related and we're not like, I'm not going to worry about this yet. We're not at war. Basically, when we go to war, we're going to want to have an Air Force, but that's not something we can do now. So if I want to dismiss that, I can just right click and now it's gone. Uh, that'll pop back up occasionally. And I could have, like we could take some off guns here and be making everything we need. But I know we're short a lot of guns, so I'll keep that on guns. I think that's a good idea. And now next, yeah, so these are, we're getting less and less here. And I could actually, I could press play right now because we have the civilian factories in the background. The only, the very, very important thing here that really demands our attention is the national focus. So let's click on that. Uh, we see a bunch of big buttons that look important. I would say the whole point of the game is to be running a national focus at all time. So we can also see, like if we click on the United States here, we see select a national focus, like this big giant button being like, you should, you should probably click on this. It's very important. So we're going to click on that. Uh, the national focuses. So basically it's like, what what you want your country to be doing over the course of a certain amount of time. In this case, it's 70 days. For the US, I'm pretty sure all of them are precisely 70 days. So you click on this, you let it run in the background for 70 days, and then after 70 days, something happens. And why I say it's the point to be running one of these at all times, so if you can think in your head, like 70 days plus 70 days plus 70 days, it just keeps adding up. Like that's, once all these start filling out, we're gonna be in the 40s, we're gonna be in war, so you kinda need to be strategic with that. Uh, if you're wondering what to pick first, we'll start over here. They're divided in general categories, so all of this is all political stuff. This is all the War Plans Division, which is like planning your offensive, like this is specific to uh, the U.S. And over here, the War Department, which is like, uh, that's improving like your troops on the ground, the training, that kind of thing. So we know we're not at war, we're not going to be at war for a while, so we really want, let's focus on the political stuff. In this case, we have a choice. We can reestablish the gold standard or continue the New Deal. Um, we see this one is blocked out. So in order to get access to this, we would have to do something like we would need to, uh, Franklin FDR would not be president. Uh, they would require a bit of setting up. So for the sake of simplicity, we'll continue the new deal. It's just, we're playing on historical. This is, it's better historical. It's what the game wants us to do. So we'll do that. So once we click on continue the new deal, we can see a little paragraph here describing uh, like what exactly is going on. So in this case, it's very simple. It just says policy of the new deal, they prove proven to work. We must not lose our way now. And then effect. So after 70 days, we will gain 150 political power. What is that exactly? Uh, you don't need to worry about it yet. We'll get into it. But um, this is basically just saying, like, the ruling party, they're doing their stuff, and we're going to let them continue, and it's going to make us, we'll get more political power out of it. So, okay. I don't even need to know what that does. I know we'll be working our way down here. This is, you know, this is America. We're playing historical, so that's a good one to do. And that's another alert, damn. Now this one here says no divisions in basic training. 
um, well, what's a division? So all the all little units you see, these are all divisions. It's like you see, these are a bunch of helmets, the horse. You don't need to know. Yeah, we'll get more into that later. But the, that's what a division is. So it's saying none of them, we're not training any new divisions. But we're not at war, so that is okay. So I'll right-click to, to dismiss that. Uh, this one here says unassigned divisions. So basically similar. So like the divisions that are in the field, they exist, but they don't, they're not assigned to anything. They have, they don't know what to do. So if I want to make that alert go away, I can just make a big box. I can select all my divisions. If I want to assign them, I look at this glowing thing down here, um, create a new army and assign them. So I'll, I'll just click that. We can see it says 19. That's the number of divisions. I can still, let's, I'm going to keep adding them in. So I'm going to select some and then right click to add them in. So this is one here. Right click. And why am I doing that? So we still see, if we look up here, it still says unassigned divisions. If I just want to make that alert go away, I can just assign a bunch of divisions and then like right now we're all spread out over the Pacific here. See a couple more here. And I'm not sure if this will be all. No, so there's going to be a couple more. Yeah, so we see two more up here. And maybe, yeah, so the alert went away. So we can see there was an alert there, it's gone. So I didn't, all I did was I assigned the divisions to an army. So now these are all part of one army, which doesn't really make too much sense because they're all kind of spread out everywhere. But it made the alert go away. So this is a bad way to organize the army, but we put them in an army, so the alert's gone. So that's cool. Now it says no template. Uh, so the no template, this is, yeah, we're getting into more complicated stuff. So the divisions, like the units, they all have a template which is basically um, like what it's composed of. And we'll get more into that later. So in this case, like if we want to see what these guys are composed of, we see um, we see all these little helmets here. So what is a, what's the helmet involved? We know it's it has artillery, it has some infantry equipment and support equipment. Uh, what this is telling us is that we're making something, but none of the divisions in the field can make use of the specific equipment. In this case, it is the anti-air. So basically we're making anti-air, but no one none of our units can make use of it. Like they don't, we haven't assigned it to anything. They're just kind of building up in factories. No one knows what to do with them yet. And that's okay, we're not at war. So we'll just right click to dismiss that. Uh, last one here says that we are short two units of rubber. So all of these, for all the things we're producing in the factories, they're eating up resources. So we can see with the equipment, they use a bit of steel, uh, sorry for the infantry equipment, a bit of steel, the support equipment uses steel and aluminum, um, the artillery, uh, uses iron and steel, so they're all kind of different. In this case, the rubber, our trucks use rubber, and those uh, those fighter planes there use rubber. So I can we can trade for some rubber, and that alert will go away, and uh, the truck and the planes will be produced slightly more efficiently. But if you don't trade for them, they'll still be produced in the background, so I can dismiss that. I know that I'm... Uh, in order to trade for some rubber, I would need to use one of these civilian factories, and I like that these are continuing here, so I'm just going to keep that. And now all the alerts are gone, so I can press play. Right now we're on speed one, but I'm gonna go up to speed five. And that is enough to get rid of the alerts. So we'll just continue now and we can see it's gonna tick down month after month. So what can we do like um, while time is progressing? What can we do? Because we could just wait until World War II. We could keep, uh, keep doing these focuses, but I think there's a lot we can do in the meantime. So we'll get started with that. And occasionally you see little news pop-ups like this one here says, uh, opposition suffers a defeat in the Senate. It'll be like, it'll give you a paragraph of backstory. And then if you want to see what this is all about, you hover over the button here. So like this one says, great. This is just saying 10 senators will support the government. So that's a huge, that's very, very significant. Like the 10 senators just decide to support FDR. Okay, sure. Like you'll get these occasionally, but the, I don't know what happened there, but the Senate likes this more. So what, what does that mean? So let's see for America. I'm going to click on decisions here. This is the one that says Congress, this is specific to America. So only America has this specific little, um, this mechanic of the House and Senate, but different countries have various ones. So this, we can see, um, it would have been at 43 before, but we said we got an extra 10. Okay, and this is another world news pop-up. So this is to do with Italy's war down here. But this is, this is far from us. Congress doesn't care too much about that. So things are pretty divided right now. And all right, we're in Ethiopia, progressing there. Um, and also all these news pop-ups, if I don't want to see them, I could disable them through the events here. So I can click if I don't want minor pop-ups. I'm going to keep all of them on for the point of the game, just so you can I can react to them as they come up. Uh, so we see here, things are pretty divided. The country's not, um, 
split between Republicans and Democrats evenly. Oh, okay. Oh, no. So we see we gained some Senate support, but now... What was FDR up to? No, he wasn't. There's no misconduct at all. So now, yeah, it's a witch hunt. Now this should go down. So yeah, we lost some House support. This is all we want in order to make the war for things to go well. We want you, the more support, the better. It just gets, things get difficult if you can't get, uh, like, we want people to love FDR so he can do everything you want. So we'll have to, we'll have to think of that later. We can see here, like, if we want to help these things, it's going to cost political points and we don't have enough. So right now we only have seven and it's going to cost like 25 to do all this. So how can we get more political points? Uh, well, it gains every day, like on its own, it's going to tick up. So the, the resource that's relevant here, it's this up here. So I'm going to hover over that. It says political power. And oh yeah, I kept calling it, they're political, political power, political points, whatever. But yeah, we, right now we have eight, we need 25. So every day we can see we're getting 0 0.15 and that's not a lot. That's not really good. So the base, um, if nothing was running at all, we would gain two a day. The fact that we're running a national focus, that takes one. So we're down there. And also um, the Great Depression, which um, if we want to learn more about the Great Depression, that's a specific national spirit. So I'll click on the flag here. I see this says the Great Depression. It's costing me one political power a day, gaining resources less. You don't need to worry about all those specific numbers. Just know that they're bad. Like the country is in a Great Depression and bad things are happening because of it in this case. Yeah, that makes sense. Like it's eating up all his political like he has to put in all his political effort to make people happy, getting less resources. So we, we want to look into that. And now also, I know I said we need more political power. Now we are up to 161 because of the focus we just did. So continuing the New Deal, that'll give us a little boost here. We'll definitely need that. Now moving along, uh, we can either get, let's see this. This is more, more political power. So what is this now? Millions of people suffering. We need an agent an agency to help uh, get people working again. This will Apparently this will be very popular, so we're gonna spend 70 days to do some magic in Congress, and the result of that will be people will just, FDR will have more of an ability to get done what he wants to. That's all neat. And also, while the home front was going on here, over in Europe, uh, the Rhineland was remilitarized, so that's pretty far away from us. I think Germany can rearm that. What's the worst that can happen? Back to the home front. Now, so let's, let's take a look at these decisions here. Yeah, we can see we can spend 25 here. Do I want to give statehood to Alaska, statehood to Hawaii, uh, special measures? I do see uh, special measures. This will just give us more senators and representatives. I think we're looking okay for now. We weren't limited yet, so we'll, uh, we'll just forget about that. Um, for the political power here of all the things to get first, let's click on this and see. We're going to look for, yeah, we see here a silent workhorse. So click on this again so with the political power you see a lot of things here all of these take political power like this is basically this is your country the laws and government research military staff all that so if i want to appoint someone yeah you could look at this as like the cabinet you're picking a political advisor or i could spend the the um political power to get uh more research better stuff like that of all the first ones to pick uh we're gonna get the silent workhorse like if you don't know anything the silent workhorse if he's available that's a good one to get they all just have different kind of names. In this case, it's Robert Taft, the silent workhorse. He's going to give us 15% more political power. So a good way, it's kind of like the research thing that we just, um, like the electronic research. So the resource we're using to buy everything, we're going to get 15% more of it. So that's a very, of all the ones to get first, we want that. Now we can see here, it's quicker research. So what was previously plus 10 should go up to plus 13. Yes, it does. And I have it set so it pauses automatically when things kind of pop up. But uh, you can disable that if you want. I just like having it on. Yeah, we see plus 13. This is going to give us an extra plus 4. So that'll go plus 17 and onward. That's great. Decisions available. Yeah, this says we can do a small... Okay, so the small lobbying effort. This costs us political power in the background. So maybe we can do that, yeah. And up to 5 senators. So let's click this. So right now we're gaining... We're gaining plus 0 0.45 a day. If I click the small lobbying effort, we're getting less political power. So now we're only getting 0 0.08. But after 30 days, uh, basically, we're going to get more support in the House and the Senate. So I think that's worth it. That's not a bad investment. And this will uh, this becomes more relevant later on. Like, you'll need support in Congress to do certain things, like, related to the war. But that's okay. So having, having this running in the background occasionally is good. If we see this get too low, I know I want the House support will be nice. 
And we see the Spanish Civil War. What will this mean for Spain? This What will this mean for Spain? So the Spanish Civil War will mean for Spain that they're going to be at war for like the next few years. And whoever wins the war, if we have historical on, it'll probably be the Nationalists, like 90% chance. Okay, Senator, yep, get more Senators supporting us, that's neat. Um, basically, the country's going to be destroyed for like uh, like several years after the war, so they won't really be relevant. Uh, sending troops there is a thing for other countries, but we can just completely ignore that, and basically Europe is crazy. Let's, let's just stay in safe America. And what is this? Representative speaks passionately in support of the government. So, what she... A representative just gave a speech, and then after that, 25 more representatives support the government. So that's... That seems like way more. That seems like a lot more than it should be, but okay, that's cool. I guess that's all it takes. All right. And okay, so we're, we're researching more stuff here. Um, here, the, yeah, the next one, we have a choice. We can pick dispersed industry, concentrated industry. Uh, you could you could do a lot of research on which one to pick. Basically, they're both good. They'll both help you in various ways. I'm going to pick concentrated industry because it's easier to explain. Basically, you you can put more factories in the state and they produce more. Same with dogs, so that's easy. Uh, if you pick the other one, you're getting you're producing slightly less, but you're getting various other little bonuses. So they're both good. They're, they'll both like help you a lot, but we'll just pick the one that requires less explaining. And what now? I can see here. What is this? Okay, so for some of this, like if I want to do the Agricultural Adjustment Act, this looks like some neat little things here. Uh, we can the depression will turn into a slow recovery. But also, like, some senators in opposition will, or sorry, some senators and representatives will, it'll uh, swing them toward the opposition. So that's why we're going to want to build up this before we get more into that kind of stuff. So uh, what else to start with? Let's do the research slot. So we can see we're researching. This will give us like, another slot so we can research an entirely different item. And that'll be very nice. And also we see we have three dockyards. And Italy has won the war in Ethiopia, so if they got a colonial possession out of that, I think what did Halle Selassie said something like, uh, "It was it was us today, but it'll be you tomorrow, or something like that." And if only they had listened. But, yeah. And I probably butchered that quote, but it was very similar. And we can see, uh, okay, dockyards. So now we built a bunch of destroyers and stuff, so we have all these free dockyards. Let's uh, put them on here. We still, yeah. You know, what do I want to do now? So it looks like we have a ton of we have all this dock stuff here. Let's. We some battleships, sure. Well, these are battleships one. You know, they're not going to be that great, but we'll just get them out. And also, um, having, uh, oh, what's this? More destroyer. Okay, so we just did uh, another destroyer over here. And, okay, so we'll drag all this up. I think I'll start wrapping this up soon. So, yeah, that was a Sims class. Destroyer two, okay. So this will show you, this is... This is, you're getting off to a good start now. Like, I'm kind of showing you how to start the game, how to research things. So if you want to try on your own from here, uh, I think that's a good idea. You can see see how things go for the actual war. Um, we're going to need to prepare an actual army and stuff, though. So this is, yeah, there's going to be a lot of prep to do. Hold on a minute here. And for the next one, yeah, what do I want to do here? Let's... I, know, I said I wanted to stick in the uh, economy stuff here, so yeah, we'll stick with that. And research lot's done. Okay, so yeah, I'll stop the video here. We're making some progress, kind of showing you how to get started. Uh, next video, yeah, we're going to do more. I see we have all this Navy stuff to worry about. Uh, set more, figure out what we want to do with our country. So, good place to stop here. If you enjoyed the content, uh, like and subscribe. That's really good. I could use some more subscribers. And I will... Uh, yeah, expect more parts in this. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time.